This is Twit. I'm really excited about this. Megan Maroney earlier this week talked to America's top young scientist. She's 11. Watch. A lot of folks in tech these days say they're doing what they're doing to save lives and make the world a better place. But Gitanjali Rao really is, and she's only 11 years old. Inspired by the water crisis in Flint, Michigan, Gitanjali created her own device that reduces the time of lead detection in water by using a mobile app to connect over Bluetooth to get the status of water almost immediately. Her invention recently also won her the 2017 Discovery Education 3M Young Scientist Challenge Award. Welcome to the show, Gitanjali. Thank you. <laughs> so tell us about your device. Yeah, so I developed a device to detect lead in water faster than the current techniques out there today. So you were inspired. You, you saw your parents uh, trying to test water. You're, in, you're not in Michigan. You're in Colorado. But your yeah. your, your parents were testing the water. And, and what, what gave you the idea to create this device? I hadn't thought about creating a device until I saw my parents testing for lead in our water using test strips. And I realized that it wasn't a very reliable process as it took them quite a few tries in order to actually um, um, find out if our water was safe or not. So um, I wanted to do something to change this, not only for my parents, but for the residents of Flint and places like Flint around the world. It's pretty much just a blue box with a white cartridge, which attaches and you just have to dip the cartridge in the water you wish to test. And it, it's called Tethys? Is that how you pronounce Te it? Tethys. And where yes. does the name come from? Yeah, it's the Greek goddess of fresh water. So I decided to give it a, a bit of a unique name. <laughs> so so you have an Arduino in there. Uh, where, did you do any testing with other with other parts first? What, what was part of your process? What did you try first? Um, well, first I started with um, the simple idea of... Um, just a device. I didn't have like the concept of carbon nanotubes or um, just the chemical reactions between lead and chloride, which is the base of my device. Um, I started out with just plain chemical reactions like we find in today's test strips. And then I started getting into the idea of displaying it on a mobile phone instead of using an LED system with red, yellow and green lights. And when I tried to display it on a mobile phone, I was deciding between if I wanted to use an Arduino processor or um, a Raspberry Pi. Um, I thought that an Arduino processor would work better since um, I had more experience with coding Arduino processors. So those are kind of the steps I took in order to develop um, my conceptual idea. So you coded the app all by yourself? Yes, I did. How did you, did you what did you use to code, code the app? Um, I used the application called the MIT App Inventor software, and this allowed me to use a drag and drop code in order to connect over Bluetooth and the app itself and create a page where you could check your status and it would give you the status of slightly contaminated, um, safe or critical according to your water status. So obviously you are very intelligent, um, but I hear that you had a little help. Tell us about what, what kind of help, what uh, mentors you had with this project. Yeah, so um, once I was selected as a finalist, um, I was assigned a 3M scientist mentor. Um, my mentor was Dr. Kathleen Schaefer, and she helped me with more of my experimentation plans and helping me make sure that I have taken all like safety and disposal requirements into consideration in my project as well. And this ensures that, um, that I don't rush and go ahead and do the experiment before I, um, I have all the materials. So I read that your parents were also very helpful, but they, they thought that maybe you would just, you had this idea and maybe you would just um, try it for a while and it, the experience would be good. They, were, were they not, were they surprised that, that you were actually able to complete this? Um, yes, to an extent they were. Um, they did help me a lot with um, my like acquiring items that I needed and for transportation as well to like the science company where I received my chemicals. So they were a huge help in this journey. Okay, so you, you won $25,000. Uh, do you have any idea what you're gonna do with that money? Yeah, with most of the money, I plan to continue evolving my device so that it um, I can perform um, false positive tests in order to ensure that it's accurate. And then after that, I would like to put it out um, into the market as commercially available so that it can be in everyone's hands. So it sounds like the parts you use is probably wouldn't be very expensive to make and produce. Do you have any idea how much something like this might cost an average person to buy? 
An average person to buy, including the device itself and the cartridge, it would cost approximately twenty dollars. So what are, what are you working on next? Um, next, I would like to do something in the fields of gene editing, since that sounds like a, a very interesting topic to me, and something like a happiness detector as well, since um, uh, I know that adolescent depression is a pretty big thing out there today, and that's another real world problem that I want to tackle. So, so what advice, Katanjali, would you have for kids your age, or even older, or or younger, uh, besides yeah. telling their parents to get them a science room? What what kind of <laughs> advice would you have them uh, to what, for them for their ideas? Something that I would tell anybody, um, including kids and adults, is to not be afraid to try. Since um, when I originally started creating, coming up with scientific ideas um, and problems that I wanted to possibly find solutions to. Um, I was very worried that I would get to like this far of creating an idea and then not being able to perform any of the experiments since I didn't know how to do them. Um, so then I learned that failure is just another step to succeeding. And um, I like to tell many people that so that um, when they have an idea and they're not sure that if they can create it, it doesn't hurt to try at all. Um, and pretty much, I think that every problem in this world can be solved. Gatanjali, thank you so much for joining us. You're totally an inspiration. Gatanjali Rao is an almost 12, 12 year old. She's still 11 for nine more days. Uh, and she is the Discovery Education 3M Young Scientist Challenge Award winner. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> what were you like at 11? I was not like that. No, wow, that's so cool. She's it, 11 years old, she's trying to tr to tackle adult depression. Yeah. That's amazing. Brilliant, brilliant kid, and uh, it, it, what, a couple of things come to mind. One is, this is how kids are before they get squashed down by us adults. Right. So th that's awesome, uh, and kudos to her parents, but also kudos to a 3M uh, for and Discovery for doing this uh, young scientist. Uh, thing. That's fantastic. That and is. That, that line about how, well, she was worried about not being able to do proper scientific experimentation. I'm thinking, okay, when I was 11 years old, I was thinking, will this gum stick to my hair? Yeah, that was it, right? <laughs> so let's find out. Uh, oh, how about that? <laughs> isn't, isn't she impressive? Isn't that a, that's so I, I, exciting. It's so I'm, cool. Well, you, you didn't see it, folks, but while we were watching the video, Lee and I were just... We couldn't again, believe again, it. We couldn't believe this. And, I mean, this is why kids should not be allowed to play video games. Yes. Uh, <laughs> That's what, that's what happens when you get something done. <laughs> this is what happens when you play video games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Megan. Megan recommended that. And I'm so glad she got, uh, she got uh, Gatanjali. And uh, what, a, what an impressive, impressive young woman.